Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so a popular question that was asked multiple times during our recent Q&A was, can you please create a GPU scaling benchmark with new third gen Ryzen CPUs? And my response to that in the Q&A was, yes, I can. So to one of that straight away after Tim and I wrapped up the Q&A, I got testing and boy, oh boy, did I get testing. The problem with this sort of content is you just can't deliver enough data. There's always dozens upon dozens of configurations and setups I'd like to test, but ultimately I have to limit myself to just a few if I wanna see the content produced before the Ryzen 4000 series is a thing sometime next year. <laughs> I've already tested the third gen Ryzen processors with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, but I wanted to add some mid-range to low-end GPUs into the mix as well. So I decided to include results with the RTX 2070 Super, Radeon RX 5700, and the RX 580. So that's a pretty decent spread of GPUs, I think. Even so, I thought rather than just test at 1080p, some 1440p results would be pretty interesting to look at as well. Then I thought, and I've really got to stop thinking about these benchmark videos, they just get way too big. But anyway, I continued to do a little bit of thinking and I thought, what about quality settings? So rather than just stick with the typical ultra type settings, I also included some preset scaling as well. In the end, I decided to cover not just ultra, but also high and medium. And I did this because yeah, I thought it would be pretty interesting to look at those results. So this left me with four GPUs to test at two resolutions with three quality presets. And that meant for a single CPU, each game would require 72 benchmark runs, as I'm of course reporting the average of three runs for each test. That being the case, I thought three CPUs would be a good starting point, and realistically, I could only test four games, as this puts us near enough to 900 benchmark runs. It took just over three 16-hour days doing nothing but benchmarking to get this data, so hopefully you guys find it interesting. The games included are Rainbow Six Siege, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry New Dawn, and World War Z. The CPUs tested for this first installment and what will hopefully become a mega gaming scaling series. Those CPUs include the Core i9 9900K, Ryzen 9 3900X, and Ryzen 5 3600. All CPUs have been tested using G-Skills Flare XDDR4 3200CL14 memory with the Corsair H115i Pro installed. Any auto overclocking features such as MC or PBO have been disabled, so it's just out of the box performance with a quality AIO. So let's get into the results. First up, we have the 1080p ultra quality World War Z results. With the RTX 2080 Ti, we see the exact same 1% low performance with the 1900K and 3900X, which isn't what you'd expect to see if you looked at the results from the RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700, as the 9900K was three to 4% faster with these slower GPUs. So that's quite interesting. The 1900K though was four to 5% faster when looking at the average frame rate with the 2080 Ti and 2070 Super, but that margin was reduced to just 3% with the RX 5700. Then as we drop down to the RX 580, which is still pushing well over 100 FPS at 1080p, all three tested CPUs delivered basically the same performance. It's interesting to note that the 3900X was still 6% faster than the 3600 with the RX 5700, and that margin only grew to 8% with the RTX 2080 Ti, as we are quite far off being CPU bound, even with the 5700 at 1080p. Now, moving up to 1440p, here we see the RTX 2080 Ti does pull comfortably away from the RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700. We do see some oddities though, when comparing the RX 5700 and RTX 2070 Super. If you look at the 2070 Super, it seems as though Intel's being favored here, as both the 3900X and 3600 are limited to around 170 FPS. In contrast to this though, the RX 5700 allows the 3900X to match the 9900K, while the 3600 does drop off a little bit. With the RTX 2080 Ti, we see that the 3600 finds its limits in regards to the 1% low performance, and interestingly, the 3900X and 1900K are now more evenly matched than they were with the RTX 2070 Super. As expected though, given what we saw at 1080p, the RX 580 creates a strong GPU bottleneck that neutralizes any and all margins. Lowering the quality preset to high sees very little change in performance to what we saw with the ultra quality preset, and really all the margins remain much the same. 
we see a mere 5 to 10 FPS drop off at 1440p from ultra to high. And again, this has no real impact on the margins. And we're still seeing the same odd scaling between the RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700. Even dropping down to medium didn't boost performance by that much. We're only seeing a 10 to 20 FPS gain over what we saw with the Ultra preset. As for the margins, well, they're all quite similar really, though with the extra headroom we are starting to see some change in performance with the RX 580. Here the 9900K was 5% faster than the 3600 for example. Then finally, the last World War Z set of results, at least for now, looks at 1440p medium testing, and here we see some pretty similar scaling to the 1440p ultra results. The most interesting thing here is how much the R5 3600 drops away when using the RX 5700, something we don't see with the RTX 2070 Super. This is again seen with the RTX 2080 Ti, but these results make a bit more sense as the faster GPU enables the faster CPUs to push higher frame rates. Moving on to some Far Cry New Dawn testing, and first up we have the 1080p Ultra results. As you can see, we're very much CPU bound at 1080p, even with the RTX 2070 Super. The 1% low performance is similar with the RX 5700, but it doesn't push averages quite as high. Then once we drop down to the RX 580, we're almost entirely GPU bound, and as a result, all three CPUs delivered a very similar result. Now at 1440p, the margins are still similar with the RTX 2080 Ti, but they do close up a little with the RTX 2070 Super. Also, as expected, very little difference between the two CPUs can be seen with the RX 5700, and again, we find the exact same performance with the RX 580. Now with the high quality preset, we're again heavily CPU bound with an RTX 2080 Ti and 2070 Super installed, and it's a similar situation with the RX 5700. This allowed the 1900K to provide 15% more performance, even with the 5700. Moving to 1440p, and here we see similar margins between the 3900X and 3600. So basically the same level of performance with any one of the four GPUs tested. The 1900K is again 15% faster with the 2080 Ti, and this time 13% faster with the 2070 Super, while the margin is reduced to 9% with the RX 5700. And of course, once we get down to the RX 580, we are heavily GPU limited, so we see the same performance across the board. Finally, with the normal quality preset enabled, we see pretty much the same performance from the 3900X and 3600 at 1080p using the RX 5700, 2070 Super, and 2080 Ti. Meanwhile, the 1900K enables mild performance gains, seeing a 6% boost from the 5700 to the 2070 Super, and then 4% from the 2070 Super to the 2080 Ti. The 1900K was also up to 24% faster than the Ryzen processors at this low resolution using these mild quality settings. But again, with an RX 580, there was virtually no margin to be seen. Then at 1440p, the 1900K was up to 18% faster with the 2080 Ti, 14% faster with the 2070 Super, 10% faster with the RX 5700, and no faster with the RX 580. Remember, this is pretty much a worst case scenario for Ryzen, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to include it in our batch of games for this particular testing. Moving on to one of the best case scenarios for Ryzen, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Here we see the 1% low performance of the Ryzen 5 3600 maxed out at the RX 5700, though we do see an increase in the average frame rate as we step up in GPU power. The 3900X manages to beat the 1900K for 1% 1 low and average frame rate performance using the RX 5700, 2070 Super, and 2080 Ti. Increasing the resolution to 1440p reduces the margins for the most part, though we do still see the 3900X punching ahead with the 2080 Ti for the 1% 1 low performance. This time we also see the R5 3600 dropping off a little with the RX 5700, and that's something we didn't see when using the RTX 2070 Super. Reducing the quality level to the very high preset sees very even performance with the 2070 Super and RX 580. The RX 5700 seems to slightly favor the 1900K, and we see a similar thing with the RTX 2080 Ti, which is quite interesting. Moving to 1440p, C's margins remain roughly the same. Again, the 1900K enjoys a very small performance advantage with the RTX 2080 Ti, and this isn't seen with the 2070 Super or RX 5700. 
I've skipped over using the high preset as performance was virtually identical to the very high preset. So instead I've just dropped down to the medium preset. Here we see the Ryzen 5 3600 fall off a little with the 2070 Super and RX 5700 at 1080p, which is odd as it didn't struggle nearly as much with the RTX 2080 Ti. We even see a very minor performance drop off when using the RX 580, though we're only talking a 4% decrease from the 3900X. Things get a little crazy at 1440p. The R5 3600 drops off quite a bit when looking at the 1% low performance, while the 3900X charged ahead of the 1900K when using the RTX 2080 Ti. It's very interesting to see the 1900K go from being 10 FPS faster at 1080p to a few FPS slower at 1440p, and quite a bit down for the 1% low result. We have seen this though from time to time in the past, and it seems in these CPU demanding titles, the added load of the higher resolution can favour CPUs with more resources. Overall though, the 3900X and 1900K were very evenly matched. It's really just the 1% lower result with the 2080 Ti where the 3900X got the upper hand. The last game tested is Rainbow Six Siege, and first up we have the ultra quality settings at 1080p. Here the 1900K enjoys a very small 4-6% performance advantage when using the RTX 2080 Ti and 2070 Super. That margin eroded to basically nothing with the RX 5700, and we're still pushing over 150 FPS on average. Then with the RX 580, there's no margin to speak of. Jumping up to 1440p sees no difference in performance with both the RX 580 and RX 5700. Meanwhile, the 1900K was just 5% faster using the 2070 Super and 4% faster with the 2080 Ti. Dropping down from ultra to very high sees the same margins with the Radeon GPUs while the 1900K enjoys a slight performance advantage with the 2070 Super and a reasonable performance advantage with the 2080 Ti. The margins are very much the same at 1440p between the ultra and high presets. Again, the 1900K really only offers a performance advantage using the RTX 2070 Super or anything faster. Dropping down to the high quality preset extends Intel's leap with the 2080 Ti at 1080p. Now it's 10% faster than the 3900X for the average frame rate, pushing well over 200 FPS. So again, you have to wonder how much it matters at that point. It was also 14% faster when looking at the 1% low performance, but for 144Hz gamers, even the 3600 was good for over 170 FPS at all times. Then we see the margins with the 2070 Super were much the same, and again the margins are neutralised with the RX 5700, and of course anything slower. The 1440p Ultra and higher results are basically the same. The margins with the 2070 Super and 2080 Ti are extended ever so slightly in Intel's favour, but not exactly anything to write home about given we're pushing over 130 FPS at all times with the 2080 Ti, regardless of the CPU used. Wrapping up the testing, let's just quickly look at the average performance across the four game sample. I know four games isn't a lot, but you know, there was a lot of testing done here. So hopefully you guys can uh, hop off my back on that one. Anyway, using the RX 580, the 1900K was just 1% faster than the 3900X. So well within the margin of error and needles to say they both delivered the exact same gaming experience with this particular GPU. Then we see that the 1900K offered a 3% performance boost with the RX 5700 but again, overall, a very similar experience. The 1900K was then 6% faster with the 2070 Super, which is nice, but I'm not sure you'll notice the jump from 144 FPS to 153 FPS. Then with the 2080 Ti, the 1900K was 5% faster on average, this time jumping us up from 161 FPS to 169 FPS. Then for those of you playing at lower quality settings, we saw the 1900K enjoy a 5% performance advantage with the RX 5700 using the medium quality settings. Then we see it was 7% faster on average with the RTX 2070 Super, and finally 11% faster on average with the 2080 Ti. Well, that really was a shipload of testing. Doesn't really tell us anything new though, but I wasn't really expecting it to. I just wanted to try and cover this from all angles in a single video, so hopefully Hopefully I've achieved that. I have done lots of GPU scaling and preset scaling in the past, but I don't think I've ever done this much testing on the subject in a single video. For the most part, you're not gonna see too much difference between a 3900X and the 9900K with an RX 5700 or an RTX 2060, for example. There is some separation depending on the title tested uh, with something like an RTX 2070 Super, for example, but 
Even so, for titles such as Rainbow Six Siege, where the 1900K was a good bit faster using the mid-range quality settings at 1080p, that margin was heavily reduced at 1440p, and even the 3600 allowed for average frame rates that were well in excess of 144fps, so you have to wonder how much it really matters. Basically, if you're looking at spending less than $700 US on a graphics card, buying a Core i9 1900K or a Ryzen 9 3900X purely for gaming really isn't a great investment. You're far better off with something like the R5 3600. In fact, purely for gaming, I wouldn't really recommend either the 1900K or 3900X unless you're dumping, say, $1,000 on an RTX 2080 Ti. The Ryzen 5 3600 really is the go-to processor right now. I'd even recommend skipping over the 3700X, purely for gaming that is, as high performance 8 core 16 thread processors won't be fully leveraged in games anytime soon. And the $130 US you save right now can go towards an upgrade when you actually need it many years down the track. As for the format of this video, the, the test scenarios covered, I think when visiting other CPUs, so doing follow-up content of, a, of this style, I'll probably stick with three, four GPUs. So what was done here, I'll also test at two resolutions. Again, what I've done here, but I think I'll probably ditch the quality preset scaling and that will allow me to include more games, which I think will give us more interesting results rather than focusing on a select few games so heavily. So let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I think that's probably the way to go, but of course I'll, uh, I'd like to hear from you guys before I make any decisions. And also let me know what other CPU or CPUs you'd like to see compared in the next installment of this series. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like because it was a tremendous amount of work even if the results weren't particularly, uh, well, they, they didn't really change too much, but as I said, we weren't expecting them to. It just gives us a bit more information and it sort of validates what we think we already know. Anyway, but like I said, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, because yeah, it was a lot of work. And if you appreciate the work we do here at Harbor Unbox, then you can jump over to our Patreon page. There's some cool perks over there. If you're interested, link in the video description, you can go check it out. But as always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.